What's up guys, Coach Madden, an official trainer, YouGoProBaseball.com, and today I've got the top 10 pitching grips for you. But before we get into that video, I want you guys to check these out. Seed Sack sent me these sacks that you can put your seeds in, customize. They got a classic version and the leather version, and that leather smells so good. I don't know about you guys, but when I was playing, everyone was sticking their grimy hands into the same seed bag, throwing them in their back pocket, they're spilling everywhere, it was just nasty. Now, with the Seed Sack, you don't gotta do all that, throw them right in, it's got a snap, self-closing, they're awesome. If you wanna find out more about these seed sack, head over to seed-sack.com and throw in Madden15 for the coupon code because they're gonna hook you up over there. All right guys, grab your sack, and let's get into the video. All right, so the first one is gonna be the sinker. Of course, it's my favorite. If you guys have been following the channel, my YouTube channel for any time, you know that the sinker is my favorite pitch by far and it's because it was the most effective for me. I truly believe it is what got me drafted and took me to the next level in baseball. And it's such an effective pitch that at sometimes I thought it was almost like cheating because when you throw it well, the batters swing and miss hugely. So it's such a great pitch and it's very safe for the arm. So how do we grip the sinker? What you're gonna do, at least what I did and what was uh, successful for me is I would grab it on the seams here with my pointer finger right here on this seam and my middle finger right next to it. I, I have fat fingers, so it kind of looks like I'm on both seams, but I'm actually trying to be on this seam with the pointer finger and the middle finger is right next to it. My thumb is gonna be in line underneath with the pointer finger, so I've got more uh, on this side of the ball than I do that side of the ball. Now, the most important thing for the sinker when you throw it is gonna be your arm angle and your wrist angle and getting on top of the ball. So if you're a guy who's a little, little bit higher, you're gonna have to be a little bit lower with your wrist angle. So if your arm angle is higher, your wrist angle has to be lower. If your arm angle is lower, then your wrist angle can be in line with your arm angle. But the most important thing is that when you throw this pitch, you wanna get over it. So when I release, I'm coming over that ball, and that's what's gonna give that movement down and slightly arm side. You want more depth, downward angle, than arm side movement to have a good sinker. The next pitch is gonna be a cutter, okay? Now, when I threw a cutter, I was never very good at it, but I could throw a good one on flat ground. I never really took it to the mound, but the way I threw it was a natural cutter, okay? And for a natural cutter, the way I gripped it was across the seams. And I would put my middle finger on this seam right here, and my pointer finger would just be underneath that other seam, okay? Now for this one, I wanted my thumb to be more on the uh, middle finger side, okay? So right here, now, when I threw this ball, I wasn't trying to force any spin on this. Like, it's not a forced cutter. This is more of a natural cutter. I just wanted to come straight down through, and I'm actually gonna pronate on this pitch. So I'm not gonna throw it like a, a curve ball or anything like that. I'm actually gonna pronate, and I want the last thing touching this ball is the inside part of my middle finger on that lace, and it's gonna give a little bit of extra rotation on that side of the ball, which is gonna make it cut to my glove side. So that's another great pitch for you. The third pitch is going to be the circle changeup. Okay, I know you guys uh, all know the circle changeup. Now, the, here's the thing with the circle changeup. If you're a sinker guy, you want to grip it like your sinker so the rotation looks the same. If you're a two seam guy, grip it like the two seam. If you're a four seam guy, you want to grip it like the four seam. So let's say you're a four seam guy, okay? So if you're throwing a four seam uh, fastball, you want to grip the circle changeup like a four seam. So I'm going across the four seams like I would a fastball. My middle finger's hooking that seam right there to give me a little extra pull down on that. I've got my circle right here on the inside and my pinky finger just kind of falls where it feels comfortable. As I throw this pitch, I really want to focus on pronating as I get through my release point and that's going to give it the extra change of speed as well as movement and depth that we need to get batters out. The fourth pitch is going to be the Vulcan. I threw this pitch uh, for a few years in pro ball as my changeup because my circle changeup was garbage. So I threw the Vulcan. And the Vulcan is just like a split finger, except it's with, uh, it's more like a fork, fork ball, actually, not a split finger. But it's uh, with these fingers instead of these fingers. So basically, you're gonna go on the outside of the horseshoe like this. The pointer and thumb is gonna be in a comfortable uh, position as well as the pinky. And all we're trying to do is come straight through that at release point and kind of get a slipping action as we release it, okay? If you get inside of the ball a little bit, it can kind of have a, 
a wobble and a down and arm side movement if you come straight through sometimes it'll get like a knuckle movement and kind of just fade out and drop those were the two ways I tried to throw it when I was throwing it. The fifth pitch is gonna be a slurve. Now a slurve is like a curve, but the way, the way I think of it, just to put it in perspective is, a cutter is more like this, a slider is more like this, a slurve is more like this, and a curve is like this, a 12-6 is like this. So if you think about it on a clock, that's the way I like to describe those pitches. So if we're talking about a slurve now, it's gonna be kinda of in the middle. So it's not necessarily a 12-6, and it's not necessarily a cutter. So it's more in between, okay? To grip that pitch, the way I used to throw it was right here on the big horseshoe, on the inside, middle finger there, get a good grip on it, and then the thumb in line with that middle finger, more on this side of the ball. Now when we throw this pitch, I'm not really trying to snap the wrist. You hear a lot of people say, snap the wrist, snap the wrist. I'm not trying to snap the wrist. I'm just trying to have really good arm speed and let this ball come out this way and get this rotation. The way the seam spin, the axis on which it spins is gonna create the angle of the movement. So if I'm trying to throw a slurve, I'm gonna be throwing it this way, right? On that axis. And that's the, the angle I'm trying to get with my wrist. Number six, pitch and grip. Uh, it's gonna be the 12-6 curveball. We just talked about the slurve. Curve, same exact grip. The only difference is, like I talked about on the movement wise, we're trying to go from 12 to six, hence like on a clock. So that's why they call it a 12-6 curveball. So we're trying to come and get that four seam rotation going more straight down versus on the slurve, it was more this way, right? So same exact grip, except we're trying to get different rotation or different angle of rotation when we release that ball. Everything else stays exactly the same. Not a whole lot of wrist snap, it's more arm speed and getting a good release point. The seventh pitch is gonna be the slider. So on one end of the slurve, we got the 12-6. Uh, on the other end, we've got the slider. So now, slider you can throw a couple different ways. <coughs> you can throw it like that slurve or that curve with the same grip um, and stay on, the, on this side of the ball and really pull it across this way. Some guys throw it that way. Or you can think fastball, fastball, fast, same exact grip, but think fastball, 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 and then cut through it this way as you release, okay? Some guys throw that pitch that way effectively, okay? The way you like to think about that is coming fastball, 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 and then turning a doorknob this way, okay? Um, I, I didn't throw mine that way. I wasn't as effective. To me, it wasn't as tight, but I have seen many guys throw it that way and have a good, uh, pitch good slider that way now one thing i do like about throwing it that way is it's more deceptive to the batter it looks more like a fastball is coming if you do it well so if you're throwing that hard sharp less movement slider that may be the way to go for you the eighth pitch and grip that i'm going to share with you guys today is going to be the fork ball okay fork ball is these two fingers like the vulcan was these two fingers fork ball is going to be these two and we want to split it nice and wide off of the laces right here. Thumb can be on or off. I actually threw this pitch uh, with my thumb off. So basically just these two fingers. All you wanna do is come straight through and try not to tilt it any which way. You can, when you get good at it, tilt it one way or the other to get certain kind of movement. But what you wanna to try to do at first is throw it straight through and have this ball slip out. And when, when it slips out, it kinda of gets that knuckleball rotation and dance is all crazy. That's the beautiful thing about this pitch, okay? Try it out on the flat ground nice and easy. When you get better with it, maybe you can bring it to the mound. Now, a very similar pitch, a cousin or a brother perhaps to the fork ball would be the split finger. The difference of the split finger versus the fork ball is the split finger is on the laces, okay? So I'm on opposite horseshoe laces. I've got one in the middle, okay? Same thing, thumb can be on or off, depending. Now the only thing with the fork ball is, uh, excuse me, the split finger is, you wanna pull down with this pointer finger as you come through it. So you get a little bit of pronation, and when you pull this down, it kinda gives it a little bit of knuckle, a little bit of depth, and a little bit of arm side movement. So it's a really, really great pitch. And number 10, the last pitch, is the dead fish. Uh, I learned this pitch my junior year in college, actually, when I learned my sinker, um, and my sinker was my best pitch, the dead fish is actually a play off of the sinker, or pitch off of the sinker. Basically, it's a BP fastball. And when I used it, 
was, let's say, for example, there was a guy on um, first base, and maybe I had a lefty up, and I wanted to induce a ground ball. So instead of so throwing something uh, hard pitch in there, I would just take a little bit off, get that nasty sink, and let him beat that ball into the ground. Whoop, easy double play. Okay, I can't tell you how many times it worked like clockwork, okay? Slowed it down a little bit. I wasn't necessarily trying to throw a swing and miss pitch because with a swing and miss pitch, that's great, but I only get a strike right there. If I actually let this dude hit this ball and beat it into the ground, now I got two outs. I'll take two outs over one strike all day long. So it's a very good pitch. Now you gotta make sure that you got that pitch, uh, have it able to sink. If you're throwing that pitch up there that's a little bit slower and it's a meatball and it's not really moving, Boom, now you got two runs versus one strike. So you gotta be very confident and comfortable with this pitch. The dead fish is basically the sinker grip. The only thing you're gonna do is take your thumb and move it to the side of the ball, right here, right? And now you're just gonna throw it just like a, like a BP fastball. Good, good arm speed, but you're not like maximum, maximum effort. So you're just getting here and you really wanna focus on that sink. So getting on top of the ball as you throw it, let the ball do the work for you. Let that guy beat it into the ground, get you that double play, head on back to the dugout. Guys, I really hope you guys are enjoying these uh, top 10 Thursday videos. If you are, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. Um, if you're interested in learning more pitching grips in my Pitching 365 program, which is on sale right now, it has tons, I think over 30 different pitches that you can learn. Um, obviously you don't want to throw 30 pitches in a game, your catcher doesn't have that many fingers to give you signs. Um, you really want three or four really great pitches, but at least it has a resource for you to learn and try these pitches so you can find what works best for you um, and use it. And again, that's just one module of 12 in my Pitching 365 program, which is on sale right now. I'll leave a link below where you can get that. So if you're interested, go and check that out. Also, leave me a comment below. Let me know what pitches you throw right now and rank them in order from number one to number whatever, however many you throw. So your best to your worst. Leave it in the comments below. I'll talk to you guys there.